Hey guys, I'm gonna talk you through the old school puck prep versus the new school modern puck prep that we do today. I'm gonna take you through three extractions using the old school method, and then I'm gonna take you through another three extraction using the new school modern method that we use today, and we're gonna manage our yield and record our time and look at the inconsistencies and the consistencies of both methods. So we've used these, this old school method you know, 10, 15 years ago when I got into coffee, I was doing it, I'm guilty of that. And I'm, I, I still see a lot of people doing these methods and I'd love to just help everyone grow into where we're up to now in the, in the modern coffee making. So let's get into it straight away. We're just gonna go straight to our group handle. Now I'm gonna do all of these shots using this one head just so we can get consistency there. Now we'll just go straight into our porter filter. I'm not bothering using the scales. We were just filling the basket straight up and I'd give it a quick tamp. Might even give it a little knock on the side to make it all nice and tidy there. I am gonna chuck my scales up so that I can measure my yield as well. All right, so I've got 46 grams of yield. I've achieved, I've achieved that in 26 seconds. So let's keep track of that. 26 seconds, uh, what I say? 46 grams of yield there. Great. Let's go again. Like I said, using the same head. It's really quick. This method was definitely something that we're all used to just kind of standing here, filling out the porta filter. This is actually a really bad use of my time. That would, that would be one thing. Straight on there, big push, bit of a knock. Nice, clean, tidy basket, but super inconsistent. Cool, so in 28 seconds, we've now got 45, 0.4 grams of yield. So obviously shots are looking okay, but I'm gonna say not tasting all of these today. It's definitely, that's for another day, but this is just gonna give you a demonstration of, of the different, different process of old school versus new school. and how you can benefit from going the new school method. There you go. In 23 seconds, I got 44 grams. All right, let's jump straight over to our modern coffee making and I'll introduce a few extra steps. Now, I'm not adding extra steps to slow you down. There's ways that you can still do this process faster, such as grinding into a dosing pot on scales is gonna be consistency. So, straight into there, I'm gonna use this grind time to actually clean my porta filter and have that ready. Now, I've got 24.3 grams. I only want 22.5, so straight away, I know that that's not my recipe and I want to be more like 22.5. I can do that. Repeatability is important. I'm going to break up the clumps, do some good compacting there, distribute the coffee around the basket so that I can get full extraction out of all of that coffee. I'm going to add the NCD tool. That's going to make it nice and well distributed. I'm going to do a consistent 14 kilo tamp so that when I come up here, I run our extraction. Now, we... Wow, so Straight away, I've actually got a 36 second extraction. I got 45.9 grams there, so 
45.9 grams of yield. So our yield's reasonably consistent, but 36 seconds worth of extraction time. So that means I've gained a whole eight seconds on top of that old school method of opportunity to extract more flavor from that coffee. So ideally I'd be changing my grind size if I was hitting 36s all the time. But you can see from my old school method that I'm not really sure what I'm gonna hit consistently. So let's jump back over here, get my grind going again. Twenty-two point five. So you can see the last shot that I did. The grind was like twenty-four point something. So straight away, now I can see that I'm actually on point. There must have been a clump stuck in there. Now I know because I'm measuring my dose. That's consistent. That's the same as last time. This is straight away out of the dosing pot. I didn't do the best distribution coming out of the dosing pot, but I have more opportunities now to make sure I get that ready there do a better distribution with that tool. And now again, repeat the process and that repeatability is really important. Great, so I've got 34 seconds. 44.5 grams of yield. So a two second variable, that's all right. 44.5 grams of yield. Awesome, let's do one more, see where we land. Again, 21.7. We just, as good as these grinders are, all grinders have variation and, and they will retain coffee, so they are another variable in the chain of making coffee. So weighing your dose is helping you manage that consistency. All grinders do it. Once you start weighing, you realize. Cool, all right. Last one. Great, I got 45.3 grams of yield in 35 seconds. Now if I compare these two results, old school, we got 26, 28, 23, that's a five second variable on our time. We are getting variations in our yield and that will be affected by the extractions. Yes, it's happening on the modern as well. It, it is a variable that we that we manage through our programming. But the biggest thing for me is the extraction times that I was able to achieve through better distribution, through better puck preparation. And I've only got a two second variable from a 36 to a 34 second. This is why we're so big on this. We teach all of anyone that does training with us, anyone that uses our coffee, we teach them about good puck preparation because we're always trying to manage variables. Coffee is just constantly about variables. So straight away, your dose. Your dose is going to impact the extraction time. It's gonna impact the amount of coffee that you've got to extract good flavor from. And you wanna make sure that you're managing your dose. If you're not understanding where you're, what amount of dose you need to impact flavor, but also just consistently doing the same dose each time, you don't know if it's your dose that's an issue or if it's your grind that's an issue. And if you're not managing your yield, you don't know if you're actually getting the wrong amount of coffee in the liquid in the cup, yield in the cup, and therefore that's becoming an issue. So managing your yield, making sure you're getting the right amount of liquid in the cup. Easy variable to manage is that dose to so the dosing pots. Weighing your shots is definitely gonna help you manage that. Now distribution, you saw straight away there that we're getting way longer extraction times. That is due, due to the distribution of that coffee. You are allowing the water to get from top to bottom and hit every granule of coffee on its way down. If you're doing that old school method and you're tapping the basket and creating cracks around the outside or through the bed of the coffee, you're creating channeling is what we call it. 
and that's where the water will find the least path of resistance and it will just go flying through and you'll run a 23 second shot. Now, if you make your grind finer because of that channeling, you're actually changing the extraction flavor and it's not gonna benefit you. Through good distribution and great puck preparation using these modern techniques, I was able to get up to 36 seconds of extraction time. Now I can go coarser and I've got much more room to work on the flavor of my coffee. Tamping is a variable pressure between staff that we just don't need. And all of these things, when you have multiple staff in your cafe, variables are killer. Someone comes, they've got a lighter tamp, next person tamps heavy. We've got all these different methods that people are using. Now this formula is something that we teach because it's repeatable between our accounts, but also between your staff members. So if you're a barista and you're trying to get the same extraction times as your other baristas in the place, or you're a business owner, and you know that someone makes better coffee than the others, introduce good processes like this. This is how you're going to eliminate variables between your staff. I hope this was a good example to see the actual extractions and how much you'll benefit from good modern techniques. Because if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Put them in the comments below. If, you've, if you're doing this or you're introducing in your, into your cafe, tell me how it's going. If you want to work directly with me and Artisti, we'll put our contact details in below. We're always looking for new opportunities to work with people that are on the same page as us and want to make great coffee. Thanks again. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video and hit the bell icon so you get notified of future videos. Thanks, guys.